This video is being created in complement to an information education page titled, What Do I Need to Know About Long COVID Related Fatigue, Brain Fog, and Mental Health Changes? While we were limited in space within the paper, we wanted to make sure to share the perspectives and experiences of individuals who actually experienced long COVID. So Monica will be sharing some of the quotes we've collected that exemplify individuals' experiences with COVID-related brain fog, mental health changes, experiences trying to relay their needs to healthcare providers, um, to family members, friends, and some encouraging quotes that demonstrate the value of understanding. So Monica, thank you for sharing these with us today. Thank you, Julie. Uh, the quotes I'm sharing come from four articles published between late 2020 and early 2022 of internationally collected interviews with individuals who experienced these particular long COVID symptoms. I'll begin with what some people said regarding their personal experiences of fatigue. The fatigue is literally like hitting a wall. I can't stay awake anymore. It's just like, wow, I have to go to bed. And this morning, I went for a two hour walk and actually when I got back, I slept for two and a half hours. And it was just like I'd been run over. You know, I felt gravity felt like it was applying extra on my limbs. And regarding the brain fog, felt lost driving and had to stop and find my position in GPS to be able to drive back home. It's a route I've done hundreds of times. And not just can I walk around the supermarket, it's planning, it's getting there, it's choosing stuff. All of that is actually really difficult. And I could not remember how to spell words. Also found I was missing words from sentences and sometimes writing things that did not make sense. And don't remember what I did in March or April up until the last week of April. I had almost nothing on my schedule. I don't know what I did. And used to do the New York Times crossword puzzle every single day, and I can't even manage the mini ones now. And finally, I can't hold multiple trains of thought. If I tell myself I have to water my plants, I must do it before another thought comes into my mind because otherwise I will forget. And finally, something about general mental health issues causing anxiety. I'm really, really fearful for the future or whether I'm going to be able to get back to what I want to do. And that's like your identity and yourself and who I am as a person is, you know, a, a big part of me is being an allied health professional. And if I can't, if I've lost that, I've lost a huge part of me. Now I'll be sharing a few quotes from people regarding trying to communicate their needs and experiences with long COVID. Had to terminate many phone calls because I could no longer comprehend the speakers nor communicate clearly with them. And I find it extraordinarily difficult. Doctors, GPs that I spoke to, I just couldn't seem to put it across at all. They would just sort of think, well, why are you worrying? Of course you're ill. You're not thinking properly, it will pass. I couldn't seem to get across the enormity of how much it's affected me and how many different struggles there'd been. And I think part of that is because my communication has actually been impaired from it. Well, one of the things that really bugged me about it was the talking about graded exercise. And I've learned from experience that pushing myself even a tiny bit has massive consequences. I did more than I should have done which is still probably only 25% of what I've done before I was unwell. And I was absolutely floored by it. By Monday, I was in bed. I couldn't get out of bed and with chest pains. So to talk about graded exercise and not acknowledge the post-exertional malaise is wrong. Finally, I'd like to share a few encouraging quotes that can highlight the value of empowerment, understanding, and being understood and supported. What I found helpful for me with the fatigue was anti-inflammatory, but also antihistamine diet. It's very strict, but it really helped me. So the moment I started to do it, I noticed improvements with the neurological symptoms as well. And I have needed more flexible hours working remotely post-COVID. 
That way I can rest as needed throughout the day. And I need to take the time to off to get better. And although that's really difficult and it's meant letting lots of people down and there's been a complete change in my life, I've managed to get to that place. And at least I know I am not alone. And I think people who actually have had the disease tend to know a little bit more about it. So, you know, Sixth Sense, I actually think the support group has given me more knowledge than the doctors have. And I have to say it was when my GP said, yes, we recognize what you've got is long COVID-19 and we're treating it like concussion at the moment until we know more about it. And we will recommend you rest and maybe try these drugs. I mean, I almost broke down. It was the acknowledgement of the issue. It takes away so much of the stress because we're all thinking, you know, is this really happening? Is this just me malingering or do I really have this thing? And so that was a key moment for me. Thank you for sharing these quotes, Monica. The sources for all of these quotes, as well as a link to the information education page that we wrote will be provided in the description of this video. Nothing we say on this video should be utilized as medical recommendation or advice, but instead as a starting point for discussions on long COVID related fatigue, brain fog and mental health changes. Thank you for watching this video.